Hi everyone, I'm Brittany Krebs, the creator of Brit Plus Con, a YouTube channel that brings hope and encouragement to military families. And today I want to talk to you guys about deployment. Deployment is one of those dreaded, dreaded words that military spouses, significant others do not like. I did not like it. Uh, the thought of my husband having to go on deployment honestly made me sick. Um, but actually, as I was going through deployment and even after deployment, it was one of the most rewarding times and growing periods that I've ever experienced in my life. And so I want to share some tips with you today on how I got through it and some things that allowed me to grow and find an amazing community. Community, uh, here in Washington where we live now. So um, hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get started. So there's a few things that happen before deployment um, and you get into that whole season, but two very important things that I want to talk about before we get into deployment is one, communication strategy, and two, whether you're going to stay or leave. And one, communication strategy is important because your significant other, whether they're on a ship or they are um, like boots on the ground or you know, in airplanes or whatever, wherever they are, they probably already know how they're going to communicate with you. Um, my husband, he knew that he could email on his ship while he was out. Um, he knew there was a phone in his space that he could possibly call me through. It wasn't a hundred percent for sure, but he was like possibly so that that kind of gave me a little bit of hope. Um, and then he knew when he was porting that he would be able to make phone calls, FaceTime, things like that. So he knew these things in advance of going on deployment. So have those conversations with your significant other to make sure and at least feel a little bit of peace about knowing that you are going to be able to communicate with them, um, not just through mail and letters, but you will be able to talk to them, possibly email them. Um, I know for us, it was more so email than it was phone call, but for you, it could be more phone call if they're on the, um, if they're on land more. And so having a communication strategy beforehand, um, is important. It also is important. So you're not left questioning how often are we gonna talk um, and you're just like worried and anticipating and things like that you know that if they port somewhere they're gonna call you they're not gonna just forget about you <laughs> um, so having that communication strategy is always beneficial whether you're deploying whether it's just a relationship in general communication is important and the second one is whether you stay or go. And by that, I mean if you yourself are going to stay in the duty station that you are at, or if you're going to go home and be with parents, be with friends, go to your home state. Um, for me, I felt like I was being led to stay in Washington. We are from Texas. Uh, all of our family is in Texas, but I felt like I was being called to stay here in Washington where a community was being built uh, at our church. And I really just felt like like here is where I was just being called to stay and honestly it was amazing I would not change anything I loved staying here in Washington um, the friendships that grew here were amazing and things like that um, but it also could have been good with my family um, so it's just really your situation and what is best for you but having that communication with your significant other so you could plan possibly moving you could plan um, you know breaking your lease to your apartment or your house or anything like that which um, is possible in the military you can break your lease and yeah, just getting everything in order to make sure you don't just suddenly decide you want to go home, but doing it beforehand and having that conversation is important. So now that's pre-deployment um, and now we'll move on into deployment. And as you move into deployment, it can be a stomach twister of emotions and anxiety and a whole bunch of things. And actually on my channel, I have a, a deployment cycle. It goes all the way from anticipation to, um, the, to basically the return. I think there's seven stages. And I learned about the seven stages in the FRG. And the FRG is very, very important to be a part of, especially during deployments, because you get a bunch of updates. You get when they're returning home or kind of a possibility of when they could be returning home. 
because uh, it's never really 100%. Um, and you get a lot of just really good information and community. And there's uh, meetups, there's potlucks, there's um, just fun things during Christmas time. Uh, you can just do a lot through the FRG. So the FRG, I would say, is probably one of the most important things to be a part of specifically while your significant other is on deployment. So with the FRG, I would say that um, just community in general is important. Having other military spouse friends, whether or not they're in the FRG, um, or they're on like a different ship or a different command. Um, just having a military spouse community is really important. Um, and then also just for me personally, a church community is super important. I know for us, we have a specific like military ministry. And so there's like tons of other military couples, military spouses, husbands within this community. And you can really just understand each other and talk about the things that other people just don't know about. And so just having community is super important always. Another tip that I would give is don't count by days. Count by weeks or even better, count by months. I really try to stay away from days or even weeks. I really just say months because one month is better than four weeks in my opinion. Um, even if like we're not even through that month, you know, I would say like we have one month left, even though we have like a month and a half left, I'm always like tricking my brain into thinking like we have one month or even a month and a half even, and not six weeks left. You know, like that just sounds dreadful. Um, and I actually learned from another military spouse that it's really not beneficial at all to count how long but we're human we have to count we have to give ourselves some hope so saying one month two months two months three months is way better than four weeks eight weeks eight weeks 16 not 16 <laughs> 12 weeks um way better than that so my encouragement if you are going to count count by months as much as possible trick your brain if you still have a month and a half say a month you know things like that um to help you along because i know that was helpful for me another tip on counting is count forward and then count backwards so you'll say like i have uh I have four months until halfway and then I have four more months until like if it's an eight month so that way it's like broken up so where you only think in four month chunks instead of I have eight months so hopefully that's helpful but that was helpful for me the next tip is making care packages I was a care packaging machine factory whatever you want to call it um, I just loved making care packages I loved going to the store and buying all the things I liked um, I think one of my care packages was like I'm blue blue without you or something like that so I got all blue things which was an adventure in itself because I had to search for all the blue items at the store um, search for all the blue crafts at the store things like that um, and so that was really fun because care packages actually take quite a bit of time making and decorating and fitting all the stuff in the box and going to the post office and just everything it just takes so much time and so having ideas already lined up on Pinterest and searching on Pinterest is another time-consuming thing so um, having things lined up in Pinterest that you can make and just pump out uh, I think is an exciting way to be excited about you know deployment um, but it also is time-consuming so you can get your mind off of a whole bunch of things the next tip I have which was huge for me and I know is huge for a lot of people that I had talked to about this was finding joy in being alone and this was something that I never thought was possible but finding joy and just like having peace finding joy in resting in journaling in walking outside and just being by yourself and I know for the most part most military couples or significant others have never been alone um, for the most part we come from our parents house into possibly college and then into marriage with our military significant other and there's never a point where we live alone or are alone and deployment is really like the first time that we're alone for a long period of time and so you really just have to figure out what do I love about me like what do I enjoy and and going on walks by yourself, figuring out who you are as a person, um, being able to be independent and finding joy in those things I think is huge and mind transforming because once you go from a state of 
I hate being my, by myself to I really enjoy being by myself. It just changes the whole game. And so um, hopefully you can find joy in being alone and whatever that looks like for you. Um, but a few things like I mentioned, going on walks, journaling was huge for me. I would spend time outside journaling. I love doing that. Um, you know, worshiping or singing, whatever songs you like. Uh, there's just a variety of things. Cooking was one that was big for me. Uh, just again, like a variety of things, but finding things that you love to do by yourself. Okay, so another one kind of going with that is set goals for yourself. Um, like I mentioned in the previous video and in this video, Cooking was a huge one for me. Um, I didn't know how to cook before deployment and I semi knew how to cook after deployment. I wasn't like, you know, Chef Gordon Ramsay or anything. My husband loves that guy. So that's the only chef I can think of. Um, but I made some meals. They turned out pretty great. Some of them didn't, but that's okay because it was a learning process. And I set goals for myself to, you know, work out, X amount of times to go on walks. We lived in an apartment and so I made it a goal for myself to get out during cold days with our dog, take him to the dog park, things like that. So even the smallest goal is super amazing and can just change again your mindset on um, being on this time being dreadful but it's actually an awesome opportunity to grow as a person by setting goals for yourself. So setting goals I think again is huge. And the last one that I would say is breathe and just go with the flow. I know that's hard for a lot of us because we want to control, we stress about everything, um, but all the time I have to remind myself just take a deep breath, let it out, and try to go with the flow because if you are someone who is stressed about everything and control likes to control things, the military is going to be so, so hard for you. Um, and not to say that if you like to control, that's a bad thing, but the military is so up and down and around and topsy-turny and never has a solid answer on anything. And even deployments, sometimes deployments are set back and sometimes they're actually brought home early. Um, I know my husband was brought home two weeks early because of a sudden change that happened so that was awesome um but but going with the flow really just takes that stress off of you again you're able to be in the moment and finding joy with yourself you're able to do things like just casually go on a walk while your husband's somewhere random overseas so being able to just go with the flow be in the moment and just take a deep breath is really going to relieve so much stress um, and like i said at the very beginning deployment is so tough it's really tough to be away from your significant other for a long period of time, but it can be an amazing opportunity for growth and it was for me and I'm hoping that for you too. So um, those are all of my tips. I hope you enjoy them and uh, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below and stay tuned for my next video, which is on PCSing.